Good day to you. I want to take up with you three cravings of man that goes on in his life all the time. One, he wants glory through wealth or wisdom. And he and that sense of glory that something that you have never had or more than you have ever had is is the thing in the man that is pulsating all the time. And this comes from his image of God that says there is more. Uh, there is vibrancy, there is more. It's not stagnation, but more. And you can't annihilate this, but you have to channel it in the right direction. Secondly, a great craving of man is to have favor with God and with fellow man. So favor is that sense of good relationality. Even after we have done not so well, we say, let there be some good relationality for me. And, uh, th and a place where this can be found, or a community where this can be found, there is a craving of man. Thirdly, a change over in this life, without going to the next birth, because the Word of God says it is appointed unto man to die once and then, then that's that change over in this life, do better than we have so far done, erase the past, call for a better tomorrow, have the best tomorrow today. This is the craving of man. It's a desire. And this is what the gospel answers to. For my eyes have seen your salvation. An old saint who was living at the time of the birth of Christ said this, Simon, for my eyes have seen your salvation. So our eyes desire to see a visible, credible, doable salvation, which has been prepared for, available for all and everyone. A light of revelation for those who don't know God yet, and a glory for your people. So this is what Jesus Christ came to answer. And Jesus Christ said, the greater than Solomon is here because we know Solomon. This is how the scriptures say in Matthew 11, 30, Luke 11, 31, the queen of the south will rise up with men of this generation at the judgment and condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something, someone greater than Solomon is here. Solomon had fame and grandeur. Solomon had wisdom and wealth. And Solomon was the only son of his mother, Bathsheba. So he referred to her in Proverbs 4.3, when I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the sight of my mother. Uh, so we know uh, Bathsheba had a very wounded life because what David did, but Mary, the mother of Jesus, had a very protected holy life. To, for the holy call she had to bear all her life of praising the Savior along in the Holy Family or with Joseph. Uh, so Solomon's, in spite of his wisdom, he corrupted his morals. So uh, Jesus Christ said, a greater than Solomon has come. Uh, this is the comparison I want to make today. What Solomon had and where he went wrong and the salvation Christ has for us uh, because he is greater than Solomon he offers us a wealth that does not corrupt, a wealth that the moth cannot eat, the rust cannot corrupt, and the thieves cannot steal. And he offers us a wisdom that will make us wise unto salvation. That's the difference. And he also has ongoing, lasting goodwill and favor coming from God. So when Jesus Christ came, he provided for all these three desires of man. So he said glory to God in the highest. That's where glory comes from. And God's favor resting on people and peace on earth. So that change of heart from violence to peace, from selfishness to peace, all that is offered in the gospel. Glory to God in the highest, Luke 2.14. And on whom his favor rests, or among whom his favor rests, there will be peace. So this man's desire, favor that what he does will do well, is the desire of our heart, 
for ourselves and for our children and the next generation. That's what God assured in Christ Jesus. May you consider this offer is my plea. Thank you for listening.